Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... Out along a country highway, heading for Lessington, was a fleet of small vans. They all belonged to the classy glass cleaning company. They stopped at a lay-by. The man known as Maskin seemed in control. He motioned with his arm to Vickers, who got out, took a steel ladder from the top of the van, and placed it incongruously against a telephone pole. A few other men watched as Vickers climbed the ladder and made some adjustments to the wiring. He held a radio handset to his ear and then yelled down, OK, line's blocked. Good. I'll bring the uncut yeah. of the road. All right, then. Right, yeah. Davis and Waller, in the trees at the back there. Right, right. Same as before, sir. Scared him off. Yeah, unless John Steed shows his face here. Yeah? yeah, then what? Put a bullet in it, that's what. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. This is what Mrs. Lyons of Yellowwood Park, Durban, has to say. It is the one party that does everything. Well, for me, I know that. Yes. There's so many things that I've, I've used and experimented with just to prove cold water, Omo. Really to put it to the ultimate test, you know, and I find that it's what's come up to all my expectations. Yes. Cold water, Omo, cleans best. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We got strawberry and vanilla, chocolate hot. That's a new type. White milky chocolate, the way you like. All over the outside, we're Wall's Pink Pussycat uh. now. Episode 6, the final episode of this story in which John Steed and Emma Peel clean up everything, including the window cleaning men, and foil the final attempt at... the super-secret cipher snatch. John Steed was more than a little baffled. Three men from MI-12 had been killed, all Steed suspected by someone who worked for the Classy Glass Cleaning Co., but how and why, and what it had all got to do with the British cipher headquarters, was still a mystery. Mrs. Peel had been planted in the HQ to keep a watchful eye on the staff, but far from throwing any light on matters, Mrs. Peel herself seemed to have turned extremely forgetful. Steed didn't like it one little bit. The only clues he had were three photographs taken by Jarrett before he died. Three photographs of the cipher headquarters. One exterior shot, which showed one of the window-cleaning vans parked in the forecourt, and two interior shots. One of George Webster, the man in charge, and the other of Murray, the security man. Steed had a projector and had blown the prints up to a large size. And yet I'm darned if I can see anything unusual about them. The cleaning van must be implicated in some way, but, but what way? <laughs> what about this? Security man, Murray, leaning against a desk, smoking. <laughs> or at least with a cigarette in his hand. And Weston himself sitting at his desk with an inane look on his silly face. <sighs> None of it's very helpful. What was that magnifying glass? <sighs> Still don't understand. Uh, wait a minute. Murray smoking. His hands... Cigarette looks as though it's right up against his fingers. Burning his fingers. Yeah, one of the fingers has got a piece of surgical tape around it. Now, what intelligent man would stand there and let a cigarette burn his fingers unless... Unless... Got an idea, Steve. About time. Hello, operator. That number, Cypher HQ at Lessington. I'm sorry, sir. The line is out of order. Blast. Can't be out of order. The security line 010 is also unattainable. It just can't be. What now? Better get going, Steed. Oh. 
And on the road near Lessington, the crowd of window cleaners went about their business. Hello, hello. Here. Right. Reporting all clear at the gate of the Cypher HQ, Maskin. Right, Vickers. All masks on there, men, and into the vans. Yes, right, Usual drill. Yes. No opposition. Right. Classic approach. Right, yeah. Up we go. Come yeah. on, get over here. The men departed to their various vans, they boarded them, the engines started up and the vans pulled off. To the casual bystander, it was merely a fleet of window cleaning vans off to a rather big job. Approaching the Cypher headquarters some time later, a guard stepped out and challenged the leading van. Oh, will you please say your passes? Well, of course. Take a good look, friend. This is your pass. Maskin wound down the window and pointed the nose of a tube straight into the guard's face. A spurt of white vapour shot into the guard's face. <laughs> right, I'll take care of the main entrance. Make sure they hit those ventilators fast. Right. Come on, man. Here we go. Other bands appeared and drove straight through the open gates. Within a matter of minutes, steel ladders were propped against the walls and white-coated cleaners climbed onto the roofs. From their buckets, they took small cylinders. Right, this is a big one, Bill. Better make sure your mask is okay. Right. Right, okay. Okay, show it off one. All over the building, they released the gas into the ventilation shafts. The effect upon the inmates was immediate. They froze in their tracks, stood or sat exactly where they were, quite immobile. Maskin and three of his men entered the main building without opposition. Right, then. That's enough, enough. Open the windows. Oh, no, 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 Oh, I'll give it a few minutes. Oh, I shall be right now. I'll even take the mask off. Yeah, it's clear enough. Yeah. All right, mask off in then. Uh, that's a bit better. I can breathe a little easier now. Well, yeah. Right, you three men come with me. The filing cabinets right. will be opened. Everything photographed. Because see to the dictaphone units. Right, come on, man. Look lively. Okay, right. Come on now, come on now. We're going to get these files open. I want to finish the old job today. Because open that cabinet. Now, the top secret one. Right. Yeah, that's it. Everything these files got to be photographed off at once. In the inner office, Emma Peel sat near George Webster's desk. They were both staring silently in front of them. Emma Peel had a notebook on her knee. The door opened and Vickers came in. He placed a dictaphone on the desk, connected it, and grinned as he pressed the starting button. The time is 10.30 and it has just begun to rain. It is a perfectly normal, perfectly ordinary day and work continues as it would on any ordinary day. It is now 11.15 raining quite heavily now but still a perfectly ordinary day vickers grinned again left the machine running and closed the door john steed was not fool enough to approach the cipher headquarters by the main entrance once he noticed the fleet of cleaning vans in the forecourt he headed for the woods at the back of the building and moved stealthily through them one of the classy glass guards was foolish enough to light a cigarette. As he struck the match, the hook of Steed's umbrella came round the tree, fastened itself round the man's neck, and pulled him back viciously against the tree trunk. Smoking on duty. Oh, very bad for the throat and lungs. Like this. A short while after, Steed, in the white overalls of a cleaner, walked confidently up to one of the armed guards on duty. What's wrong? Anything wrong out there in the woods? Good morning. I don't think so. What? What the hell do you do with that umbrella? This? Oh, this! <coughs> well brolied, Steed. Steed, swinging his very useful umbrella, walked confidently into the main building, where the high-speed photography of all top-secret papers was going ahead quite smoothly. How many more to go? The last one now. A perfect operation. Now, I'm getting hungry. Ah, uh, Murray's sandwiches. Vickers approached Murray's desk. The security man was staring down at a pad in his hand and didn't move when Vickers opened the top drawer of his desk and removed a package of sandwiches. You like one, Maskin? Ham and chutney. Oh, good. No, no, thanks, no. Time to check our patients now. Oh, guess we'll hold them for another hour yet. Maskin walked into Webster's office. There was a pause and... <coughs> I'll try this for size. Steed dropped a window cleaning pail on Maskin's head. <coughs> Up, threw him across the room. What the? It's speed. Oh, get... <sighs> Never speak with your mouth full, old Jim. Here, get him! 
Back in Webster's office, Steed locked the door. The dictaphone was still monotonously droning out its message. It is now 35 minutes past three, and the rain has stopped. But the skies are still cloudy, and it is a perfect... Steed switched off the dictaphone and spoke rapidly into it. Listen carefully, Mrs. Beale. I shall count up to three, and you'll wake in a perfectly normal way. One, two, three. Wake up. Steed slipped a pair of headphones over Mrs. Peel's ears and switched on the dictaphone. Three seconds later... Oh! Oh, Steve, hello. Busy day, Mrs. Peel. Mm, not particularly. Nothing really interesting happened. Oh, what the devil's that? Funny you think it's so dull. Watch out! Two men rushed in. Steve dodged one, hit the second hard. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, not to be left out, seized the first one, got a good hold and threw him through the window. <laughs> Uh, sleeping on the job, Mrs. Peel. Assisted by the latest line in hypnotic gases. Come on, let's see if we can't get Mother to... Stay where you are, Steed. That'll be quite sufficient. Lava. <laughs> Might have known. Chap who owns classy glass. Oh, I suppose someone had to train these types to kill as well as clean. You've caused us a great deal of trouble. But your mistake was meeting us on our own ground. Now, don't move. This gun is loaded. And you've got them all. Jarrett, Peters and Ferret. Hardly disturbed the office routine. That's the beauty of hypnotics. People only see what they want to see. Well, it is useful, I agree. You'll just climb in any window and no one blinks an eye. Exactly. Even when I pull this trigger, Steed, no one will react. Ah, sorry, old chap, but you've forgotten the cardinal rule for window cleaners. What's that? Never leave your ladder unattended. Mrs. Peel, who had been standing near the window, had seized the end of it and pulled it into the room. Lava turned, Steed knocked the gun out of his hand and hit him. Ah! Mrs. Peel pulled the whole ladder into the room and dropped it on Lava's head. Ah! So he was behind it all. That's the man. What a... A snake in the grass. Well, yes, naturally. I mean, with all these ladders about, there's bound to be a snake somewhere. Care for lunch on this perfectly ordinary day, Mrs. Peel? Gosh, Mary, you're lucky to have such a hard-working servant. <laughs> what do you mean? I haven't got a maid. Well, how on earth do you manage to keep your floors so clean and shiny? Ah, that's easy. I use Duo. Duo? Yes, Duo, the self-shining floor cleaner. It's so easy because Duo cleans and polishes in one go. How do you mean? Well, Duo lifts all the dirt out of the floor and dries to a bright, long-lasting shine all by itself. So when you use Duo, you don't have to worry about polishing. No, Duo cleans and polishes in one go. Once an OMO user, always an OMO user. So many housewives, like Mrs. Adnall, say... I wash every single thing in cold water and anything that's washable come out spotlessly clean. Yes, OMO cleans best. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.